In recent times, historical facts about the brutalities black African slaves faced have surfaced. People have come to know how black male slaves were dehumanized and treated less than humans. They were chained and forced to work in plantations, and when they did not, their arms and legs were cut. For black women slaves, the world was a manifestation of the worst dream where they were sexually abused and treated as breeding machines. But one age group often gets ignored, black children slaves. History books exclude them and accounts of how they were treated. In this video, we will explain what painful was done to black children slaves during the era of slavery and the slave trade. Their story is of pain, deprivation, and the worst form of degradation. The Black History Archives Slave children received smaller rations compared to adults since they were not considered fully productive laborers. Masters, on the one hand, had an interest in the survival of children as potential future workers and assets. However, there existed a constant struggle between the delayed economic benefits of their future labor and the daily cost of their care. Most societies formed through the transatlantic slave trade relied on the continuous importation of native Africans to maintain their enslaved populations. In contrast, the United States saw the slave population sustain itself through slave breeding. By 1808, when the transatlantic slave trade officially ended in the USA, less than 1 million slaves had been imported into the country. After 1807, the majority of illicit slave trading involved children. By 1860, the population had surged to 3.9 million with 56% under the age of 20. This shows the large number of slaves who grew up within the United States slave system. Slave children were seen as valuable assets by their masters and society, with their monetary value and future potential investments. While it might seem logical to protect and nurture these assets for economic reasons, the reality was quite different. The living standards of slave children were largely determined by the benevolence of their masters. Experiences varied greatly, with some children claiming they worked continuously through their formative years. The entire slave community had to share responsibility for raising slave children. Typically, mothers were expected to return to work, and babies were cared for by the very young and the elderly. There were invariably many children to care for, often over long hours. Feeding children on plantations could be harsh, with sparse provisions leading to quarrels over meals. In some cases, it was reported that black slave children were fed like pigs. The food provided was often referred to as pot liquor, described as a vegetable-based broth. Malnutrition was not uncommon, leading to the characteristic signs of shiny bodies, plump bellies, and glistening ribs in some cases. Clothing for slave children was basic, typically consisting of smock-like garments worn by both boys and girls. The clothing of child slaves, who contributed relatively little labor, was not a priority. It was not uncommon to see naked children on plantations, and torn or lost clothing was seldom replaced. As children took on fetal work, boys might receive trousers and a shirt, while girls were provided with dresses. Shoes were rare, and when available, they were often homemade moccasin-style footwear. Slave quarters vary widely, with visitors describing them as huts or hovels, or occasionally romanticizing them as cottages. The dimensions were often cramped, with limited furnishings and basic amenities. Children often did not live in traditional families, as the lack of recognition of slave marriages and family ties by owners led to children being placed with adults other than their parents. The labor performed by enslaved children holds particular significance as it serves as the fundamental reason for their enslavement. The ages at which these young individuals were put to work vary significantly from one plantation to another, but it seems that most owners prefer a gradual introduction to labor. There have been some accounts reporting that some toddlers were working in the fields alongside their mothers, while the oldest age at which work began was 21. Here's a reminder to please support us so we can make more videos for you by subscribing to our channel and giving the video a like. We want to build a strong community and we need your support. Let's continue now. The tasks assigned to younger children did not appear to be gender specific. These tasks included activities like fetching water for the fields, tending to animals in gardens, kitchen and household chores, and caring for younger children. 
Some boys were even allowed to learn trades such as blacksmithing or carpentry from a very early age. The fear of being sold or the mere threat of it was a constant presence in the life of a child born into slavery. While eventually, several states enacted laws to prevent the sale of children under the age of 10 away from their families, it was common for children to be sold alongside their mothers. This frequently occurred when the master passed away and their possessions, including slaves, were divided among the family. In the early days of slavery and less frequently in later years, children designated for sale would often be paraded naked on the auction block as prospective buyers scrutinized them meticulously. They examined teeth and bones and searched for any signs of weakness or abnormalities. No slave, not even children, could ever find the luxury of security they had to resign themselves to the fact that at any moment at their master's whim, they could be sold and uprooted without any recourse. The experiences of slave children cannot be painted with a broad brush. They vary greatly depending on several factors, including the period, location, and type of labor. For instance, slaves working on sugar and rice plantations face more grueling physical labor compared to those on tobacco plantations. It's worth noting that many of the hardships endured by slaves were the result of a system that had outlived its time. As one observer aptly put it, slavery frustrated the desires and abilities of the blacks. It perverted the whites. When slavery vanished, no one mourned it for long. For slave children, the most trying trials lay ahead. Around the age of 10, they began to encounter the harsh realities of slavery. Full-time labor, a higher likelihood of being sold due to legal restrictions lifting, unwelcome attention as they reach sexual maturity and being perceived primarily as a means of production by their masters. Slave children were thrust into labor from a tender age, their roles evolving as they grew older. These young souls initially served as assistants to their older counterparts and with time, they became seasoned stand-ins for aging adults. The age at which they took on regular duties varied depending on the whims of slave owners and the size of their slave holdings. For instance, Thomas Jefferson's instructions were clear. Children till 10 years old to serve as nurses. From 10 to 16, the boys make nails, the girls spin. At age 16, go into the grounds or learn trades. These enslaved children carried out specific tasks, whether in labor groups or under the task system. Irrespective of the labor arrangement, childhood was short-lived in the world of slavery and work began at a tender age. Mingo White, a former slave residing in Franklin County, Alabama, vividly recalled his childhood, stating, I wasn't nothing but a child, but I had to work the same as any man. I went to the field and hoed cotton, pulled fodder, and picked cotton with the rest of my hands. In the winter, I went to the woods with the men folks to get wood or sap from the trees to make turpentine and tar. We made charcoal to run the blacksmith's shop with. I also helped my mammy with her work. Her task was too hard for any one person. She had to serve as a maid to Mr. White's daughter, cook for all the hands, spin and carve four cuts of thread a day, 144 threads to the cut, and then wash. Slavery thrust children into adult roles, including caring for other children. Meanwhile, Mary Bell from Missouri had a rather unique job, saying, they put me on a pony at mill time to ride out to the field and called the hands to dinner. William Hudson, living in Tulsa, Oklahoma, during his interview, mentioned carrying a little black bag when his owner went at doctoring folks. Whether purchased or raised within the household, small children were assigned duties designed to instill in them an understanding of the Southern social hierarchy and their subservient role within it. Many plantation owners stationed young boys and girls at gates, ready to open and close them for white family members and guests. Lula Holmes Williams, though smaller than her charge, became a companion to Miss Lucy, her owner's daughter. She was held accountable for ensuring that Lucy wore a bonnet when outdoors. Slave children were responsible for performing personal services for all members of the white family, including the overseer and his wife. Girls typically served women and their daughters, while boys tended to men and their sons. These young laborers were often tasked with fetching various items, from shoes to desserts or mail from town. Yet there was another side of the story. The tragic story of young Harriet, 
an enslaved girl who met her untimely end in James M. Torbert's well on August 30, 1855, is a somber reminder of the hardships faced by enslaved children. James M. Torbert, an Alabama planter, recorded this heartbreaking loss in his farm journal, noting that Harriet was just four years, three months, and three days old when she passed away. She was forced to work more than her age, which she could not and passed away. In his journal, Torbert wrote, she was four years, three months, and three days old. Anthony comes to the plantation after me. I came home, made a coffin, and buried my little negro. I am sorry my little negro is dead, but I can't help it. Harriet's tragedy wasn't the only one Torbert had to confront. In July of that same year, he had crafted a coffin for another enslaved child and documented it in his journal. This child, Arthur, a little boy owned by Torbert's father, had also passed away, and Torbert had overseen his burial. Enslaved parents and slave owners shared a sense of loss when enslaved children died. The infant and child mortality rates were shockingly high among the enslaved population, particularly in the coastal rice-growing regions. Black infants born into slavery died at twice the rate of white infants, and enslaved children continued to face a higher mortality rate than their white counterparts who survived infancy. It's because since they were born, they had to fight an inevitable war, which they most often lost. Plantation policies that allowed children to survive, even if this meant lower short-term profits from crops, held additional benefits for owners. Slaves raised from infancy on the home plantation tended to be more loyal and obedient than those purchased on the auction block, according to owners' beliefs. Planters who had witnessed the strong bonds forged between owners and slaves believed that those born and raised in the master's household or long-standing members of the family regarded the owner as their father, a connection they thought would last a lifetime. But this cannot be believed, as a father will never force his children to work in plantations in the worst possible conditions. When black slave children did not perform their tasks, they were punished the same way as adult slaves. The reason why the mortality rate was so high among black slave children is because they were abused and when they could not perform their work, they were punished, which resulted in their death. In the case of black slave girls, they were forced to bear children at the age of only 13. They were forced to mate with other black slave adults in the breeding farms so more children could be raised for more labor work. The institution of slavery ensured that slave children should be completely crushed in their childhood so they became slaves mentally. They knew if they did not do what they were ordered, they could be whipped, tortured, sold, or killed. They also knew nobody would hold their master accountable for the murder as they had no rights in the first place. They were mere objects their masters could play with and sometimes abuse and kill. Did you know black children slaves went through all this? Isn't it true that they grew up while being chained in slavery, knowing that their entire childhood and life would be wasted in slavery? Let us know what you think about this in the comments section right below. Would you like us to make more videos? If yes, please support us by subscribing to the Black History Archives and clicking the bell icon. You can check out more videos on our channel too.